Zero is heavily underrated. I think he is actually really, really good. He is my go-to on maps like Bank and Chalet that have really wide open rooms where you can get a lot of information traffic from. So let's talk about that in this video. So dudes, welcome to an off-the-cuff operator how-to. We're not gonna do a super deep dive here, but we're gonna take a look at some gameplay footage from my 10-man server that I play in. And I'm really gonna show you what makes Zero work. So Zero works on really big open rooms like this, like Chalet Lobby and Bank Lobby. A huge advantage you get with Sam's Argus Launcher is that you can place them on high vantage points. High vantage points give you better field of vision and allow you to see more things than you otherwise wouldn't. Especially on vertical maps like this, it's important to have. Here, my teammate can call out pretty much every angle I'd ever have to be worried about. Can someone get- do we still have the Sam cam in main? Banana. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. One banana, one banana. Like, by the beepers. Okay, he ran off, ran off, ran off. Side note, if you want someone to watch a camera, you should verbally call it out. Don't just expect dead teammates to be looking at your camera specifically. There could be a whole bunch of other cameras on the board that they could be on. It's banana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right here on three ping. Slowly creeping by the beepers. He's waiting for me. Yeah. Reloading! Nice. Yeah, okay, put Kate pushed away. Kate pushed away. Order on the table. Order on the table. Going stock. Going stock in. Now that I know because there's two people left and one is stock, he's probably going to be in sight somewhere. He's down in stock. Nice. So, what makes Sam different than a conventional drone? Well, for one, drones can't get rid of utility, right? They can't zap stuff. They can't do things like zap out cameras. And they can't be shot from a distance as far away as you can see here from Jewelry Spawn, which I usually do. I actually swap to IQ in this round. I'm doing good, but man. Zero's cameras are a lot more functional. You can set them up later. You can pocket them. You can put them onto a surface, then wait a little bit, and then use the burrow function to go through a wall when you want it to. There is a lot more modularity with Sam's camera versus a drone. You can place it wherever you want, whenever you want, and it can get rid of weak enemy utility, which is not insignificant. Cameras are, of course, really useful utility for the defense. The one instance in which it is tough for Sam to get ahead is when the defense is using a very intel-heavy setup. So Sam cameras are pretty limited in terms of their ability to actually, you know, fan out and find enemy gadgetry. You can get rid of gadgetry when you can, but it's a little bit of a side note to his overall package. In this case, because of the same reason why I would put a Sam camera there, Valkyrie is very commonly going to put Valk cams here as well. So in order to counteract that, I get an IQ, we have a Twitch. It's very easy to get rid of that camera. It takes a lot of time sometimes to even find cameras that you're relatively aware of in terms of the position of them. With IQ, you can do a Z ping and then it's quick and easy and you don't have to fiddle with it. Every second counts in a round of Rainbow Six Siege, so this is no exception. So for the same reasons that I placed that camera in the first round, Valkyrie wanted to do the same thing. Because if we look at the geometry of the map, look at the amount of different angles that the enemy can hit us from. There is Banana, Trump, the elevator above me, then here, this hallway that I'm in on the first floor, as well as archives over to my left. So that wide open room that is Bank Lobby is connected to at least six different entryways that the enemy can push from. So it's really, really important that you have some kind of information source in that part of the building, because if you don't, you're going to miss out on a ton of traffic. Here, we know that somebody is pushing from lobby because of a drone that I preset. And I don't, you know, I kind of, with my positioning here with the gunfight, but what's more important for me to do here is to waste this guy's time, not necessarily take an engagement. He feels pressure, probably because of the info. He might be getting red pinged. I don't remember if he was or not. But eventually, he does get pressured into a gunfight that is not advantageous to him. Even though I didn't win my gunfight, well, nobody won a gunfight at all, really. He still did not feel comfortable in that position, probably because of that reason. Something else that happens a lot whenever you talk about operators in this game, or really anything in this game, any kind of skill-based element, is people will say, oh, well, somebody will just play perfectly in this situation and just shoot the thing, right? Like, they will be 100% attentive to the thing. Everybody is a robot. Someone will be a robot and know exactly what to do in this situation, and this strat won't work anymore. If only every FPS game in the world was like that, 
where your opponents were perfect creatures that just never made a lapse in judgment or pushed something that they shouldn't have or were just inattentive to something. I, I swear, I, I always feel like anytime somebody makes this comment, it really proves that they just have no clue what they're talking about and don't have nearly the same amount of experience as they feel like they do. A skill of any competitive sport is the ability to capitalize on mistakes, even mistakes that are made by good players, because good players will also make mistakes. In this round, in this example, there was a, I guess you could call it an inattentiveness mistake, which is a very common thing with Sam cameras. One of the main things that people don't like about Sam is that they feel like people will just find the cameras. They'll just look right at them. It's so big and obvious, like, duh, are they dumb? No, it's not that they're dumb. It's that the game has a million different things going on and your mental bandwidth gets taken up. I know that in Silver Elo, right, you might think that somebody is a moron for missing one piece of utility that had a sound cue mixed in with a bunch of other sound cues. When you're playing in a more competitive environment, you have to take into consideration four or five different pieces of utility. So in this example, I have a flank camera that Smoke is just completely and totally unaware of. I tried to comment from my teammate, unlucky, there was a communicate. I don't know, possums if you're watching, like, were you listening, man? Um, it's okay, <laughs> but importantly, we managed to get the refrag here just because Smoke just doesn't even realize the camera is here. And I'm not in a lobby with bad players. Like, all these guys have been playing the game for a long time, and it's usually, you know, when I get a game where I'm in the double digits, I consider that I've had a pretty good performance. So these guys are competitive and they know what they're doing. It's just that the game is a game that has a lot of different pieces moving around. Like standing there? Uh, he's over the shield. He's, he's, oh, yeah, he's, he's, like, he's pushing Dead. Dead. Nice. Good nice. work. Okay. Take a look at what just happened. In that very short amount of time, we used Sam's util to get a really, really important flank pick. I used the GON-6 to get rid of a piece of utility, and if you can believe it, that camera that I shot here where I'm kind of looking at electrical, that camera is still going to have some play in the late round. It's T-Bird, it's T-Bird. Okay. Jesus Christ, one's up here and he's dead. Oh, top blue, top blue, top blue, top blue. Alright, then push, push, push B, push B, push B. Oh, that's just running towards archives. In push archives, in archives. Plan B, plan B, plan B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Called. This dude worried the hatches. Right now she's still just going through things. Tyrus, running towards, I have two cams. Uh, running towards cellars, got one of the cams. Stay alive, stay alive. The is online and active. I can tell you if she was on blue. Okay, flick those cams. So here we can clearly see that Zero has a very obvious beginning, middle, and late game gameplay loop, and that's something that you can leverage. If you use your cameras over the course of those three minutes, you have early game information that you can gather for the initial entry, you have flank watch in the middle, and then you have post plant execute in the late game. So he has a gadget that is useful in every single stage of the round. He's not really a one trick pony. And he has a gun six, he has a really good gun to frag with, and he has can openers if you need to open a hatch. So Zero is honestly probably the most well-rounded attacker in the game right now. The only thing that he's really missing is vertical. Also check out how you can use the cameras to burrow through walls like this and then get a little bit more forward momentum of the actual information game. Then I get rid of another camera, right? So I'm gaining information and I'm denying information at the same time. I'm setting up safe flank watches so that my teammates can get rid of the hatches on this floor. There's just a lot of different things this guy can do. And I feel like a lot of people give him a bad rep because in a competitive environment, you're not really going to get much out of this, right? You're going to have a plan. You're going to have a plan with the drones. Your team is going to be much more coordinated. And they're going to do a million different things that you otherwise aren't really going to do in a, in a you know, kind of slapped together environment like a 10-man, even if it's competitive or especially ranked. So because of that, Sam often gets maligned as a non-competitive operator. And I think this is silly. I think that for the average person, if you can get some leverage out of this guy... You should totally do it. I think he's a really fun character to play, and I think he has a lot of different moving pieces. I don't know why we are clearing this. I think we are lost in the sauce here with the information game or something. Something was, was calmed bad, but better to be safe than sorry. We cleared it to make sure that the top floor guy wasn't there anymore, and I get slammed here. Good shot, Ariel. Honestly, just like GG, you can have the channel at this point. Here is another operator that I bring on attack all the time. This is Ram. Ram has been one of my favorite characters Really, since she was added to the game, I just really like how strong she is um, at vertical play. <clears throat> um, I'm a lonely bitch. 
Now I'm doing something a little bit silly here, a, a little bit cuckoo, a little bit cuckoo for craze balls. I am solo pushing top floor while all four of my teammates are on the other side of the map. That is not a joke. That was the idea. It's staff hub. We kind of figured if a lot of people are allocated over there, they're just going to assume that nobody is flanking and they're going to be inattentive to any kind of top floor vertical clear and maybe even miss the intel game entirely. I was also feeling confident about my shot. I felt like I could take the 50-50 gunfights if I had the opportunity to do so. I would not suggest for you to do this. This is purely a judgment call on our part, stratting and putting things together. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. If you're doing a top floor clear like this, you should do it the proper way. You should have drones ahead of you. You should at least have somebody on you, right, to play refrag in case you go down. Um, but, you know, for a number of different reasons, this actually kind of works. The principle of it, though, is that RAM is really, really good for clearing this site because Bank has a lot of vertical positioning that you can take advantage of through these floorboards. Now, something that I do here that's a bit of a fake out is I don't completely take the engagement, like, heads up through the initial rooms when I start placing the boogie cars. I kind of wrap around the side and only slice the pie in a way that is advantageous to me, right? Because if I'm peeking, if I'm face checking into a big wide open room, I'm not gonna know where they are, but they're gonna know where I am. So I take the long way around and I use the boogie cars as a vertical soft pressure distraction tactic more than something to play on top of, which sometimes is useful because a lot of the time people aren't going to take that chance of putting themselves uh, putting themselves in a position where they can get potentially shot from vertical they're usually just going to run away completely and to that point right sometimes people feel like they haven't accomplished much when they get vertical control on a map even if you are opening the floorboards you are still doing something because you are soft pressuring you are forcing people to take that gamble right to pick between staying here and potentially losing that gunfight if you know if they don't feel confident about it or they reposition themselves and that helps you because you are influencing their behavior you're making them do something that they don't want to do and you can capitalize on that another great example of sam fisher's kit is the can openers for this particular site hit when you're hitting bank lobby uh this site is particular it's it's unique because it has four freaking hatches right there's a lot of hatches and if you can open those entryways, it's really, really useful because it just makes it more difficult for the enemy to narrow down your push. And they have to watch a bunch of different things at the same time. And you can play trades down. Now, this particular round was a bloodbath because everybody just kind of flooded at the same time. But the principle is there. I got the pick. It turned out to be in our advantage because even though I got traded out right away, we had man count advantage. And so whenever you're trading down in a high man count situation, that is advantageous because eventually the other team is going to run out of bodies and then you win by elimination. So there you go. And finally, to wrap it up, here's the reason that ACOGs are so powerful on defense. This is a standard pixel angle. I am leaning towards the direction from which the opponent will come from out of dirt into server or from blue stairs. And I'm sorry, Blizz. Um, you kicked my ass in the clubhouse game after this a couple days later. So take that as a consolation. Unfortunately for you, that will not be going on YouTube. And this will be going on YouTube, so I apologize for nothing. But basically, just don't try to hold angles uh, unless you have an off angle or you have a pixel angle like this. This is a very, very powerful pixel angle for server, and we managed to clutch it up. Also, take a look at my red player here. Really good usage of the dock. One of those handy-dandy moments where, because he's behind cover, notice that he didn't overextend. He took his engagement behind a piece of a hard wall and he was able to revive himself for a really, really decisive game finisher here. So clutch up Doc from Zach Orange. And yeah, I don't know how often I'd like to do videos like this. Um, it really depends on how this one shakes out. Commentaries for Siege nowadays don't tend to do particularly well unless I'm complaining and whining about Ubisoft. Um, so I might have to go back to that, but we'll see. Thanks guys, deuces.